but only trust in Jesus' name. Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong in the Savior's love through the storm. He is Lord, Lord of all. When darkness seems to hide his face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds with Hey, check, look, check. everybody, it's Pastor. Hey. <laughs> what are you all doing in here? <laughs> well, good morning. So, oh, I am late. Holy cow. Uh, good morning. Good morning. It is so good to see you. I was uh, standing out greeting people and... Uh, Join the sunshine, and I wasn't watching the clock, so my apologies. But um, you know the Bible verse. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. It doesn't matter if it's sunshine or rain. It's a day that God gives us as a gift. And we thank God for that today, and especially to be together. I also want to say thank you to all of those who are visiting today, who are guests. Um, we're thankful for your presence. 
We pray that uh, the Holy Spirit in some way has led you here for this moment. And we just pray that you'll find uh, this time together in worship to be a blessing uh, as we lift our voices and sing, as we share our prayers together, as we hear the gospel uh, read and shared. And uh, as more and more together, I guess that's the biggest part. So, uh, A couple announcements to be made. We want to invite you to come on Wednesdays at 5.30. Uh, we are having a delicious soup made for us. It's a Lenten dinner. Uh, it is a tortilla soup uh, made by um, a very uh, Scandinavian family. Uh, and so the heat uh, will be intense, I'm guessing, and the spices overwhelming. But it'll be wonderful. We hope you'll come and share in that. And then at 6.30, we're going to share in worship together and as we learn more about uh, the book of Esther in the Old Testament. So please come be a part of that. Anyone else have an announcement to make today? One that you'd like to share? Okay. Well, let's continue with our worship because our worship band is right on time and they're ready to lead us in singing in Christ alone. Please rise. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song, this cornerstone. This solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace. When fears are stilled, when striving cease. My comforter, my all in all. Here in the love of Christ I stand. alone, who took on flesh, fullness of God in helpless faith, this gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones he came to save, till on the cross as Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied, for every sin on him was laid.
We continue our worship with our confession and forgiveness. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let's pray. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, and we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you, and for his sake God forgives you all your sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become children of God and bestows upon them the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. We invite the children. everybody how you doing today guess who's back somebody called 911 hi everybody the fisherman called the fireman he said i'm gonna be gone he goes i need some help i said okay i will do it for you so the fireman glenn is back so you always usually get a treat with me right you know i was thinking today why don't we have a healthy snack Who would like a healthy snack? Anybody? All right, I have this bowl here, and it's full of fruit. So who wants a banana? Okay, I'll just pass them out here. We'll go through this bowl and see what we got. We're going to grab them there, leave them or not. All right, I got some pears. Who likes pears? Anybody want a pear? Okay, I have a little bit of grapes. Who likes grapes? Anybody? Barrett? All right, what are these? Peaches. Who likes peaches? Ooh, 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 ooh. All right. And then I, I have apples in my fruit bowl. Who likes apples? A man, G. Can you catch this if I throw it over there? Okay. How about Lily? Can you catch it and give it to him? Okay. Another apple, T-bone. How about oranges? Who likes oranges? There you go, buddy. Okay. Well, I have left I don't know I've never really seen any of these things before what do you think that is a prune I don't know does anybody else know does anybody out there know a fig you know what does anybody like figs no looks too much like a prune doesn't it how about do you like fig newtons anybody like fig newtons I mean it tastes like a fig newton You know, I'm going to put this down here and you guys can try them and see if you like them. But you know what? Having the figs in my bowl, it kind of reminded me. Hey, one of those fell right down there. You know, back in the day, there was this man and and he had a fig tree. And you know what? That fig tree wouldn't produce any fruit. You know, like the fruit that we have today. So he went to the gardener and he said, you know what? That tree's not producing any fruit. Bam, cut it down. It's not doing anything. Well, you know, it's kind of good for shade, maybe. 
But then the gardener, he said, you know what? Why don't we just wait, give it another year? He goes, I'll take care of that tree. He goes, I'll take care of it. I'll fertilize it. I'll dig around it. I'll water it. And he goes, and then if it doesn't produce, we'll just get rid of it then. So what do you guys think that God was saying about planting us here on earth? Did he want us to produce good fruit? You think so? What kind of stuff do you think he wanted us to produce? I mean, we can't produce fruit, but we can do other things. What do you think? Oranges? Oranges? Okay, maybe not fruit, but we can, uh, we can spread love. We can spread peace, patience, and kindness. What do you think about that? We could probably do that. And how are good ways that we can do that? How are good ways we can do that? Well, we can come to church and we can worship and we can pray. Those are all good things, don't you think? All right, you guys ready to pray with me? We'll do a repeat after me prayer. Dear God, help us receive your gift of love, wisdom, and patience so that we can share your gifts with others. And then all God's children said, Amen. All right, I do have one more thing. I know you all are very concerned. The truth of the matter, Tracy asked me about this today. The Fireman Glen sucker bucket broke. I know, I had it on the bus and it broke. So we, that's the bad news. The good news is now it's a sucker boot. So there you go. Yes. Today's first reading comes from uh, the book of Ezekiel, chapter 33, verses 7 through 20, and that can be found on page 861 in your pew Bible. Son of man, I have made you a watchman for the people of Israel, so hear the word I speak and give them warning from me. When I say to the wicked, you wicked person, you will surely die, and you do not speak out to dissuade them from their ways. That wicked person will die for their sin, and I will hold you accountable for their blood. But if you do warn the wicked person to turn from their ways, and they, do not, and they do not do so, they will die for their sin, though you yourself will be saved. Son of man, say to the Israelites, this is what you are saying. Our offenses and sins weigh us down, and we are wasting away because of them. How, how then can we live? Say to them, as surely as I live, declares the Sovereign Lord, I take no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but rather that they turn from their ways and live. Turn, turn from your evil ways. Why will you die, people of Israel? Therefore, son of man, say to your people, if someone who is righteous disobeys, that person's former righteousness will count for nothing. And if someone who is wicked repents, that person's former wickedness will not bring condemnation. The righteous person who sins will not be allowed to live even though they were formerly, formerly righteous. If I tell a righteous person that they will surely live, but then they trust in their righteousness and do evil, none of the right, righteous things that person has done will be remembered, and they will die for the evil they have done. And if I say to a wicked person, 
you will surely die, but they then turn away from their sin and do what is just and right, if they give back what they took in pledge for a loan, return what they have stolen, follow the decrees of life, and do no evil, that person will surely live. They will not die. None of the sins that person has committed will be remembered against them. They have done what is just and right. They will surely live. Yet your people say, the way of the Lord is not just, but it is their way that is not just. If a righteous person turns from their righteousness and does evil, they will die for it. And if a wicked person turns away from their wickedness and does what is just and right, they will live by doing so. Yet you Israelites say, the way of the Lord is not just, but I will judge each of you according to your own ways. Here ends the first reading. Today's second reading comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 1 through 13. And you can find that on page 1,149 in your pew Bible. For I do not want you to be ignorant of the fact, brothers and sisters, that our ancestors were all under the cloud and that they all passed through the sea. They were all baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. They all ate the same spiritual food and drank the same spiritual drink, for they drank from the spiritual rock that accompanied them, and that rock was Christ. Nevertheless, God was not pleased with, them, with most of them. Their bodies were scattered in the wilderness. Now these things occurred as examples to keep us from setting our hearts on evil, evil things as they did. Do not be idolaters, as some of them were, as it is written. The people sat down to eat and drink and got up to indulge in revelry. We should not commit sexual immorality, as some of them did. And in one day, 23,000 of them died. We should not test Christ, as some of them did, and were killed by snakes. And do not grumble, as some of them did, and were killed by the destroying angel. These things happened to them as examples, and were written down as warnings for us, on whom the culmination of the ages has come. So, if you think you are standing firm, be careful that you do not fall. No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. Here ends the second reading. invite you to stand for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel is from Luke, the 13th chapter, beginning with the first verse. Now there were some present at that time who told Jesus about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mixed with their sacrifices. Jesus answered, Do you think that these Galileans were worse sinners than all the other Galileans, because they suffered in this way? I tell you, no. But unless you repent, you too will all perish. Or those 18 who died when the Tower of Siloam fell on them, do you think that they were more guilty than all the others living in Jerusalem? I tell you, no. But unless you repent, you too will all perish. Then he told this parable. A man had a fig tree growing in his vineyard, and he went to look for the fruit on it, but did not find any. So they said to the man who took care of the vineyard, For three years now I have been coming to look for the fruit on this fig tree and haven't found any. Cut it down. Why should it use up the soil? Sir, the man replied, leave it alone for one more year. I'll dig around it and fertilize it. If it bears fruit next year, fine. If not, then cut it down. The gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to be seated. I 
I forgot uh, two important announcements uh, at the beginning of the service. I guess I got a little flustered being late and all, but um, one is that please mark your calendars uh, for Easter. Uh, that is April 17th, Sunday, April 17th. Uh, we have, are going to have uh, three worship times, and so you can come early in the morning at 7, and it's the sunrise service with our youth leading that and being a part of that. It'll be, it'll be great. And then 9 o'clock, our normal time for worship, and then you want to stay in a little bit and get up a little later and come at 11, uh, we invite you to come and celebrate Easter at 11. Uh, we also are having uh, the return of the Easter breakfast. And so uh, a couple years of COVID had limited that somewhat. And now uh, we're going to have that on Easter morning from 7.30 uh, to 9. Uh, and it'll be quite incredible. Uh, there's a sign-up sheet out on the commons desk. If you have an egg bake recipe that you would like to share, and some of them can be um, normal egg bake kind of thing, but some might be spicy and some, you know, just mix it up and have some fun. And we have 25 feet of counter out on Peace Cafe and it'll be egg bake from one end to the other and fresh fruit and other things. And so it'll be quite wonderful. You'll enjoy that. Um, the basket that we put out uh, is going to go to the same cause as our noisy offering. And that is to send money uh, through Samaritan Purse to Ukraine and Poland there where they're distributing items for people who are refugees. They also set up a field hospital uh, to help with that. And so your gifts that go in that basket uh, will really help make a difference in Ukraine. So thank you for that. And lastly, I, I should have mentioned next Sunday is New Member Sunday. And so some of you are sitting there going, oh, man, I'd really like to be a member of this church. Uh, I've been thinking about it a long time. I've been coming and the like, and now would be the time to have uh, be a part of that. And so uh, just let us know. There's a form on the back of the seat there you can put your name on, and uh, we'll, we would receive you next Sunday uh, as the new members. Plus, you get a swag bag. Did I mention that? It's... Uh, Filled with, uh, you get a, a, some jam, and uh, you get the church constitution, a directory. It's incredible. You'll just, I, people will join just for that, I'm guessing. So, so anyway, let's pray. Lord, I'm, I'm mindful today how your word works in our hearts. Uh, we read those words, and, and it's sometimes confusing. Galileans, and blood spilled, and a, a tower that falls, and a fig tree. And Lord, we wrestle with that, but we know that your word works inside us. It starts to turn about, and it starts uh, raises questions, and we wrestle with it. And when we get to the very end, Lord, we know that it's good news for us. It's good news for us that we get another year, that there's, a, there's an opportunity to repent, that we can turn back towards you and you welcome us. We thank you, Lord, for your word today. Amen. Well, we are in the midst of Lent. We are right in the, the middle time uh, on our journey. And so is Jesus as we have been working our way through the Gospel of Luke. And in today's gospel in particular, we have left Jerusalem, or we have left uh, the Sea of Galilee area behind uh, the headquarters for Jesus' ministry in Capernaum, his hometown of Nazareth, and all the surrounding areas that he preached in. He healed people in, he cast out demons in, and huge crowds came, he broke bread for 5,000 and the like. And he left all that behind now, and he's headed towards Jerusalem. Not only just to Jerusalem, but, but towards the end of what he is to accomplish. He's on his mission to get to the cross that he will die for our sins as a sacrifice for us. Headed Jerusalem then has significance uh, for Jesus as each step of the way becomes more serious, uh, more intent, if you will. We're uncertain of the location of today's gospel. It doesn't say 
on a hillside in Samaria or Judea or something like that. It doesn't really tell us where it is. But I read an interesting article that said that they that this person felt that this is uh, on the Mount of Olives. And if you know where that's at, um, you got the city of Jerusalem with the high walls, the temple in the center, and you go down the Kidron Valley, and you come up on the eastern side, and that's where the Mount of Olives is located. It's where Jesus will go to pray um, on the night uh, where he is taken captive and put on trial. The Mount of Olives, this person said through other documentation, is where when Galileans made their journey from uh, uh, northern Israel and came to Jerusalem for the Passover to celebrate and to make sacrifices at the temple, uh, this was their campground. This is where they would pitch their tents and sit with their family and eat and then go into the city of Jerusalem. So I, I kind of like that. And I, I, we don't have huge evidence that that's the case, but I would say that today... Uh, it's a it's an interesting picture. Jesus sitting maybe in the evening, a lot of Galileans around him, which he probably would know, his disciples, of course, and they're talking, they're sharing. They're, they're kind of like looking at the newspaper, like you would look at the newspaper for, well, if you looked at a newspaper, it would tell you that. Or if you watch TV and you were to see the headlines that was taking place, uh, if you've been at all aware uh, at all, uh, Ukraine would be all over the place, would it not? And a number of other things. For them, on that particular day, for Jesus and all those that were surrounding it, it was something else. It was this event that took place up on the Temple Mount where a bunch of Galileans had been there to give their sacrifices, to do their sacrifice uh, at the Temple And in that, something went wrong, and Pilate and the guards and the like um, took them out, uh, killed them right there. And this is where it says that their sacrifices that they were making of uh, animal sacrifice, where the blood was mixed with the Galileans themselves. And so if you can imagine uh, the stories you've heard about Ukraine and uh, a group of people being uh, killed uh, there and during the, uh, this war, this would be similar. A bunch of Galileans were killed at the very spot that was supposed to be safe, that was supposed to be a holy space and a place of, uh, of uh, respect for what God is doing. And so you had that as a news story, and they were interested in that. And the second one was if they read down the page or if they waited for the next news story to come up, it would news alert. The Tower of Siloam collapses and uh, kills 18 people. You got these two stories going there at the same time, and they're talking about it. And the people who are with Jesus have got something else to ask, though. They said, you know, why did this happen? Why do these tragedies happen? My friends, I I think we've had the same thoughts these past weeks, haven't we? Why would a war like this take place amongst people who love peace, amongst people who we would love to travel to visit some uh, people there, to enjoy our, our being together with others and learning from each other? Why would somebody go to war and kill innocent people in that process? We have the same questions in mind. I don't know if you heard this story or not, but there was a horrible tragedy that took place uh, down in Texas uh, with a van load of golfers from college golfers who took off, and uh, they had been at a tournament, were coming back, and a pickup truck uh, driven by a young person went across the center line, maybe blew a tire and went across the center line and hit them head on, and everyone died in that tragedy. It's the same kind of thing. What happens when these bad things happen in life? And is there some way we can come to understand it? Is there something that happens that we might blame this upon? Well, for for the people in Jesus' time, it was, well, these folks may have sinned against God. They may have done something wrong, and therefore this uh, terrible tragedy happened. 
And Jesus says quite clearly that no, this is not the case. Uh, Are these Galileans any worse sinners than any other Galileans? No, they are not. Are the ones who died, the 18 who died when the tower fell upon them, worse sinners than anyone else in Jerusalem? No, they are not. It is not that individual sin that is the cause of those tragedies. But we would say that those causes are because of our overall sin of humankind. That we live in a broken and a fallen world where tragedies and things, senseless things, meaningless things like this happen in people's lives which we cannot explain, but we know that the cause is sin. And how do we know that? Well, one reason we know that in particular is that in Romans 6, uh, Paul writes, he says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God in eternal life in Christ, our Lord Jesus, is for all of us. Lent is a time where we return to God, where we kind of pivot ourselves around from all the things that we thought were important, all the things, all the places that we thought we needed to go, all of the person that I think I needed to be, and we turn back to God and let God create in us that new heart. That faith then, in confessing our sinfulness, our broken relationship with God, might be restored and renewed because of what God has done for us in Christ. Romans 3 says this, it says, All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. All of us have, not just the Galileans or the ones who were killed in that or any other tragedy, but every one of us here. So return to God isn't one out of obligation. It isn't one out of the demand of the law. It isn't one out of fear of punishment, but returning to God is one of seeing the great love that God has for us. It is more the case that we are being welcomed home again, right, by the loving Father. And that's a beautiful thing. That's good news for all of us. Well, Jesus answers the question in the end of the story today. Why are these things happening? What is it about? What is, why is this important to you? Um, by telling the parable of the fig tree. That's really quite a simple little uh, parable. The vineyard or the garden is the people of Israel. The owner of the vineyard would be God. The gardener is Jesus. The fig tree represents our hope in all of us and our need to bear fruit, to have God's purpose in our lives, to bear fruit. The three years corresponds to Jesus' ministry in part. But interestingly, if you read up on figs, which I'm sure you're all going to run out and do tomorrow, um, is that when you plant a fig tree, it takes three years before it is possible for it to bear fruit. So... There you have the story. But what does it mean? Well, here's what it means. It means that every one of us here who wrestle with sin in our life, not only the things we do, but the human nature, our brokenness in front of God, has a second chance. Each one of us here has the opportunity to turn back to God and to bear fruit. And so... We give thanks today. We say, thank you, God, that we have this opportunity, that we have a gardener, a Savior, who loves us so much that he will tend to us even when we don't, are not bearing fruit at that moment with the hope that we will in the year ahead. So let's return to the Lord and bear fruit. Amen? Amen. Let's stand to sing a great song, Be Thou My Vision.
let us confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I invite you to be seated. Um, this is the moment in our worship where we spend just a little time to say, Yea, God, for things that are going on in our life or in the life of this church. And so if there is a, a Yea, God, this morning that you would like to share, uh, that would be just great. And we have a we have a microphone and a camera coming out at this very second. So Doreen uh, Seal right there has one. Good morning. I want to I'll be real quick with this, but I want to kind of give a shout out to the outreach committee and also all of you as um, that come to church. Turns out the month of March and April are really busy months for the Outreach Committee. Turns out two weeks ago we hosted um, the annual chili feed for the firemen. You can see we have Glenn here who's a past member and we have a lot of people who are members of our church and worship here that are firemen and we're thankful that we do have the protection and see with them. The other thing is um, coming up here in April we're also going to be doing pineapples, delivering pineapples, which Kathy Rickenberg will be asking for help. We've been fortunate, too, again, that a lot of the people we have given pineapples to have become members of our church. And uh, if they ever are sitting around at your table, maybe they'll share your sto their story with you um, on how they got the pineapple. But now my big thing is um, we're going to be, our big thing this summer is the corn feed. And we all know how much we love the corn feed community one. We do fundraisers. One of them here is we're having the bingos. And if you've been to Rails to Trails at all, um, they actually have been playing at night. Um, last year they rounded up. But we're having them here at the church. You can go online and get your tickets, or we'll be selling tickets at the Connect Desk also for them. $18 previous or um, 20 at the door. The other thing that we're doing is we're actually doing a fundraiser here for spring flowers. And this is another one where we um, net proceeds will help go with money for the corn feed. And so, again, you can order your flowers online. Um, they end on April 7th, but anything you get is truly appreciated. And the outreach committee could not do this without everybody supporting us the way that you do. So thank you very much. Yeah, you bet. Thank you. Let's have a yay, God, for the outreach team and all that they're doing. Good morning, everybody. I'm making um, a little plea. So Sandy is our wonderful secretary here at church, and her daughter is a Girl Scout. And apparently they live in Winstead, and she went out to sell her Girl Scout cookies, but another troop had already canvassed the town. She what? sold two boxes. <laughs> so she was telling me this, and I'm like, put it out at the Connect counter. And she's like, oh, no, I, no, I can't ask. And I'm like, please do. So if any of you need Girl Scout cookies, it would be a wonderful way to support Sandy, our secretary, for all the things she does for us here at church and her daughter and the Girl Scouts. Thank you. Absolutely. Yay, God. <laughs> Hi, everybody. This is kind of an announcement, but a yay God, too. Online the other day, I saw Tony Dungy is coming to Grace Lutheran Church on April 23rd from 9 to 10.30 in the morning. It's a Saturday, and it's called Arise with the Guys, and it's all for men. Sorry, ladies, but it's all about football, faith, and great stories. And if anybody would like to go, maybe we should get a group of fellas to go and uh, see what we can come up with. So dads, call your sons. 
Sons, call your dads. Let's see what we can do. Tickets are $20 a piece. And talk to you after the service. Yeah, the God for Tony Dungy in that ministry, yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. Anybody have a yay God they'd like to share over here? Lindsay? Oh, I'm nervous. Okay, so this is a big yay God. We've been part of this church for almost a year. I'm going to embarrass my kids. I want to say yay God to Edie. You're the first one who mentioned what this church meant. You planted the seed. Yay, God, to Trish, who continued to brought to make the, make the seed grow. Yay, God, to Mark, for as soon as we met you, you, like, attached yourself to our kids. Yay, God, to Nicole, who loves on my daughter. Yay, God, to Mary. And... Um, and oh gosh, so many people who brought food and just reached out to me when I, my foot was hurting. Yay God to you, Pastor David. You don't know how awesome you are. No. <laughs> when Tori and I first came here and met with you, yeah. we left thinking, holy cow, the Holy Spirit is so everywhere here, you guys. You don't <laughs> Amen, know. yeah, you bet. <laughs> it has been, oh yeah, I don't know if Diane and Marty are watching, but yay God for you, Diane and Marty, oh my gosh. <laughs> I, if I didn't call your name, I'm sorry. This is, God has been putting stuff on my heart. Like, oh my gosh, you guys don't know how amazing this church is. We have been searching for a church to love us and to love you, and we found it. So yay, God, for put planting seeds. Yay, God, for pushing. Oh, God, yay, God, because you're amazing. So yay, <laughs> God, I love this church. Thank you for being amazing. Oh, absolutely, Lindsay. Thank you. <laughs> yay, God. That was great. Thank you. Uh, good morning. I just wanted to do a quick yay, God. Um, Ella is here with us today, and she uh, was invited and was accepted to the National Honor Society for Watertown Mayor. So we're just super proud of Ella, and she has a ceremony tonight at 7. So I'm just super thankful for uh, God uh, and putting Ella in our lives and her, all the hard work that she's done this year to make that possible. So yeah, God. Fantastic. Yay, yeah, God, for Ella and that. You know, Ella, I've never seen that shade of red on you before. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> uh, one more? Okay. You going to stand up? No? Okay. So Leo wanted a uh, uh, yay God because he learned how to ride a bike without training wheels yesterday. So All right. Yeah, way to go. If you didn't hear it, he uh, rode his bike without the training wheels. And so that's fantastic. We got one back here too, Mark, if you want to. Yay God that my friend Georgia got her ear pins yesterday. <laughs> yay God. <laughs> Tracy? Tracy. Yep. Good morning. Uh, Zachary Potter, are you here today? Yeah. Hi, Zach. Yay, God, for Zach. Zach was one of the first kids to sign up for VBS. Woo Thanks, Mom. <laughs> and watch for his uh, slide in the announcements this coming week. And we'd like a lot more of you to uh, sign up as well. So, yay God for VBS. Please get um, your kids or grandkids registered. The early bird special is through uh, April 17th to save a little money. Also, yay God for our volunteers. If you've volunteered in the past, yay God for you. And if you haven't and you'd like to join us, we would love to have you. Our first meeting is Tuesday at 5 o'clock here. It's an awesome, fun uh, group. VBS this year is the last week in June, and we'd love to have your kiddos and you join us. So, yay God for VBS. Yay God for VBS, yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Also, I'm going to add Zach Potter won his, the Minnesota Gymnastics Tournament yesterday, right? Is that how I say that? First place for Zach, that's awesome. All right, yay. Hi, a while back I was um, telling you about a friend um, 
from White Bear, whose mother lived across the street from the embassy in the U.S. Embassy in Ukraine in Kiev. And um, she got to Poland somehow, and then she got to Germany, and then she flew in um, a, couple, a week or two ago. Yeah. So um, she's safe. She's living with her daughter and her daughter's husband, and um, still need prayers because she's not a Christian. Okay. Yay, God, for her getting to the uh, and to being uh, part of the refugees and safety. Yes. Amen to that. Okay, thank you so much for those of you who have been contributing to our mountain of food. The mountain is getting bigger, and we're almost halfway to our, our monetary goal as well. And then a big shout out to the Studebeck family who are doing the um, slides for the very first time. Yay for volunteers and Colette for doing the uh, video recording. All so right. awesome. We love our volunteers. Absolutely. Yay God for volunteers. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Uh, we should have a shout out here too. Uh, Tim Dressel, where are you? There he is, uh, back from surgery and back in church, and we're just thankful for your healing. Let's say a yay God for Tim and for that. Um, And many of you know uh, Judy Jacobson had a hip replacement and is at home uh, recovering, and I understand from a couple people is uh, doing much better. And so yay God for Judy and her recovery as well. So, yeah. Well, we're going to continue with our worship here, and we're going to be sharing in an offering. I know. How about that? Uh, we passed the plate down the row. Some of you I know are online givers. That's fantastic. Uh, but just know, just know this, and I'm serious, that when you put a gift in that plate, it creates ministry like you see here this morning and VBS and all the other things you heard about. So thank you. You are a blessing. Let's receive our offering. Scattered words and empty thoughts They seem to pour from my heart I've never felt so torn before It seems I don't know where to start Well, it's now that I feel Your grace fall like rain From every fingertip Washing away my pain I still believe in your faithfulness Cause I still believe in your truth And I still I still believe in your faithfulness. And I still believe in your truth. And I still believe in your hope. I still believe 
Please rise. The vineyard Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and all for all people according to their needs. We cannot begin to worship you, Lord, without bowing our head and bending our knee in humble prayer towards you. We're mindful this day, Lord, of the needs around this world, but in particular in the countries of, Slovakia, uh, of Ukraine and all the ones that surround it. We ask, Lord, that that you would protect those innocents, those children, those moms and parents and families. That, Lord, somehow in and amongst the leadership and individuals that you could touch their hearts and begin to bring about peace. Lord, in your mercy. And, Lord, for all those who... uh, are on the front line over there for those who are working with refugees, those who are providing food and shelter, those who are protecting, those who are uh, sharing with medical needs. We pray, Lord, that you give them the strength to continue to serve. Lord, in your mercy. And Lord, we're mindful of those in our community, too, who serve in such ways. For our first responders, Lord, we give you thanks for our firefighters and for our law enforcement folks and for everyone else who makes our community safe. Lord, in your mercy. And Lord, for those in our list of prayers, we just want to lift them up to you. Those who are members here at Peace and their families and friends, but also uh, those that are beyond us. We just pray, Lord, that you continue to bring your healing. You continue to bring hope, that you bring them strength of faith to carry through. Lord, in your mercy. For all these prayers, both spoken and unspoken, we lift and place in your hands this day. In Jesus' name, amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks for it. He broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup. And when he'd given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of your sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Shall we pray together this prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to be seated. If you're worshiping with us online this morning, I just want to invite you to prepare uh, the bread that you might share and the wine and have it ready. And when we do that, we're going to say to each other, the body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you.
that grace is mine to know his breath alive in me beneath his wings my weakened soul may soar all fear and flee for death's dark night is overcome my savior lives and reigns forever
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let's pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. And we pray that in your mercy you would strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, being uh, this past week was St. Patrick's Day, we wanted to close with this Irish blessing for today. And let's, let's say it together. May the road rise up to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face and the rains fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. Amen. Let's sing. Say 